Hello and welcome to Transfer Spotlights, our series highlighting the people and programs that make UMass great with a specific focus on need to know information for transfer students. Uh, today, we're gonna to be discussing the Center for Multicultural Advancement and Student Success or CMAS for short. Uh, to that end, I'm joined by Ciara Rodriguez and Willie Pope from CMAS. Uh, Willie and Ciara, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to start off, I was wondering if you could give us a general overview of CMAS and the services that are sort of under that umbrella, um, and also maybe what you both do within CMAS. Awesome. Um, so as stated, my name is Willie Pope. I am Assistant Director for the Center for Multicultural Advancement and Student Success, known as CMAS, um, and I'm also a success coach. Um, so, you know, today, you know, myself and my colleague, um, Mr. Rodriguez, will kind of just kind of give you a brief overview of who we are and kind of what we do. Uh, so we can get started in that CMAS is a unit of the um, student affairs and campus life that promotes support and guidance to students from diverse backgrounds to help them navigate the university system throughout their college journey. You know, so students really become um, life members of the CMAS family. Our mission is to work with students to build community, a sense of belonging, personal growth, and promote inclusion with a focus on social justice and transformative learning. Um, we achieve these goals through our various programs and services, such as success coaching, cultural enrichment, and graduate school preparation. Mm -hmm. um, so um, just kind of going, I'll share some information about our success coaching um, services. Uh, CMAS success coaches are members of your success team who use a student-centered approach to, your, to support your academic and personal growth. Our goal as success coaches is to build a productive partnership with you to develop a personalized success plan to work uh, that works best for you. Um, so we really wanna get to know who you are as a person, um, what your interests are, what your goals are, what you're passionate about, and what is your overall definition of success? Um, and, you know, just kind of work with you to achieve your goals in that respect. You know, we're also there to kind of really celebrate your accomplishments and we want to support you through those challenges, you know, making sure that you're connected to the university resources, um, that, uh, that we develop partnerships with across campus. But overall, we just want to really let you know that you're not alone, you know, that we are here for you and, uh, that's kind of the, the support and guidance that we want to offer. So I'll turn it over to uh, Sierra to kind of kind of speak a little bit further about our culture enrichment component. Yeah. So hello, everyone. My name is Sierra Rodriguez. I use she, her, hers pronouns. So I work over in the cultural centers for CMAS, and we have four of those. So we have the Josephine White Eagle Cultural Center, which is for our Native and Indigenous stu students. Um, our Malcolm X Cultural Center for our, our predominantly Black students, um, our Latinx American Cultural Center for our Latinx folks, and then our last one, Yori Kochiyama Cultural Center for our Asian um, American, Asian Pacific Islander students as well. Uh, so along with those four cultural centers, we do a lot of programming that will focus on cultural student engagement, um, social engagement, cultural education, and social development and cultural student development as well. Um, so the, we have programs uh, pretty much every single week. Right now it's in a virtual format, but we're hoping that we'll be able to have uh, more hybrid and in-person programs um, in the future. Um, so with that, I oversee some of the student staff and they're the ones that helped create these programs. So it's a very much a, you know, a give and take kind of procedure where we're all working together to you know, do programs that are benefiting our community um, to establish that sense of a belonging and community that uh, Willie has stated before. Um, I believe we also have the uh, graduate student program. I don't know if Willie mentioned this a little bit. Uh, so with that, you can go on our website and actually have some mentors in order to help you out with your graduate school application. So as long as you actually put out a graduate school application that is considered a big success um, and we'll be able to work with you alongside with that. And in order to keep connected with us and to you know, utilize all of our different resources or to get the information that we want to provide to you, we have a weekly newsletter that folks are able to um, join in for. 
Yeah, we can definitely put some of those links uh, in the description of either the video or the audio, whoever, whatever, whichever you're <laughs> yeah, listening yeah. to or watching. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'll just add just a little bit more um, in regards to our graduate school preparation program. Mm -hmm. It's called the Each One Reach One Mentoring Program. And that program is really um, designed and focused for students who are thinking about furthering their education mm -hmm. beyond their bachelor's degree, you know, thinking about seeking the opportunities to pursue either a master's or a PhD. PhD. Mm -hmm. And as Sierra mentioned, we help students, um, we assist students with the whole process, right? Mm -hmm. The application process, um, how to research a graduate school program, how to prepare for the exams, um, uh, graduate school exams, how to write your letter, uh, your personal statement. Yeah. Um, it's normally kind of a, a, a small cohort. Uh, we normally take in about 20 students in that particular program. But you know we're looking to expand it as well. Um, but it's a great opportunity just to get plant the seed. Um, we mm -hmm. try to plant it early so that you're um, well equipped to to move on in that process. Mm -hmm. Also, we kind of go over you know what have you thinking about taking a gap year? Well, what does yeah. that look like? Right. You know. Um, so and as Sierra mentioned, you know the overall goal is for students to complete at least one graduate school application if that is the, the path that you choose, or at least to apply to three career positions. Hmm. And also kind of, I'm bouncing back and forth, but within <laughs> that gap year, you know, we have connections with um, AmeriCorps uh, organizations such as City Year and Peace Corps. So hmm. those types of opportun opportunities are available to students. We have um, workshops that students can attend um, we have guest speakers that come in and things of that nature. So we really try to uh, help our students think about that process in, in, in an in a actual way. Totally, that, that sounds fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, I, one question I would have is, um, so after a student, whether they're thinking of taking a, a gap year or haven't yet applied, or maybe they submitted one application, are you continuing to advise those students if they're pursuing in that grad school program after they they, are they reaching back out to you? Um, is there a continued uh, conversation after that if they are still looking? <laughs> Definitely. Um, we all, we, once you're a part of the CMAS family, you're always a part of the CMAS mm -hmm. family. So, um, you know, during your undergraduate years, it doesn't stop. So even beyond graduation, if you need any assistance, the students are always um, uh, capable of reaching back out to us. And we also reach out to our alum because we want to connect mm -hmm our undergraduates with our alum, creating pipelines and just, you know, acting as mentors and things of that nature. So we invite them back, you know, uh, to have uh, information. A lot of our alumni also, when they're in their positions, they want to reach back and give back. So we have alumni that does that as well. Yeah, and, and so that kind of uh, uh, transitions a little bit into my next question. Because um, all of that sounds really, really amazing. And it's really, honestly, these videos and, and podcasts have been really helpful for me as well, of like, <laughs> of learning all the specific things that are within the umbrellas of our, our really great uh, programs. Um, one thing that I, that I think it's important to, to kind of talk about is um, if you, if both of you could kind of talk about uh, what are some reasons that transfer students should consider participating with CMAS? Um, some of that is, I think, obvious, uh, but I think, but, I, you know, kind of drilling down to for a transfer student specifically, uh, especially if they're coming in with a associate's degree as a, as a junior, um, you know, they might not automatically know what ways to get involved, how they can connect, mm -hmm. and what are some examples of why they should consider it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be kind of brief uh, with my responses so that Sierra will have that opportunity because I think she's one of the critical uh, uh, connection points for students as well. So first for me, um, CMAS has passionate staff, right? Um, that's one of the main reasons. Um, our staff really believe in students, believe in their dreams, and um, that's one of the main reasons why we do the work that we do. So with transfer students coming in, if they're looking for someone who's going to advocate for them, who's going to support them, who's going to, you know, be there, like I said, you know, to celebrate them with their accomplishments, but also help them navigate through those challenges, CMAS, and, and, and not only CMAS, but I know across the campus, um, 
we have passion and staff who are invested in the student success. The other component would be um, a supportive community. You know, uh, we definitely where is a is a place where you're encouraged and you're free to be your authentic self, right? So students can feel comfortable and have this um, um, place where they can, you know, like I said, be their their authentic self, but um, knowing that you know they're going to be supported in that. So they're creating a supportive community, and then. Last is be transformative learning. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, we're going to support you, but we're also going to encourage you and push you just a little bit to get outside of your comfort zone, right? Um, to explore new interests, you know, to really make the most out of your college experience as possible, um, and letting, like I said before, letting you know you're not alone in this journey. We are with you every step of the way, no matter what. We're here to. Um, advocate with, for you and, and support you with that. And now I'll turn that over to Sierra. Yeah. I absolutely echo everything that Willie has just said. Um, I was a transfer student myself and going to an equally as large university as UMass Amherst is very daunting and overwhelming and certainly scary. So trying to find a smaller community that you can see yourself in and you see yourself reflected in, um, I think is really important first step for any transfer student, um, especially if that person would like you know, help with anything, whether it be trying to find, you know, a major or find some friends or finding those opportunities um, for further involvement. I think this is a great first step for that. Um, one being that newsletter, like I said, we're always sharing, you know, workshops, internship opportunities, um, other organizations and clubs that are having events. So even if let's say you're not interested in any of the programs, the cultural centers or CMAS as a whole might be doing, we're going to showcase, you know, Stonewall or, you know, the the business school, what they have going on, or any other organization that wishes to, you know, share their events with us. Um, so I think it's a really good first stop. And by going through our programs and meeting our staff, you're going to get that sense of community, and you know, hopefully meet other friends. I know it's kind of a little hard in the virtual format, um, but folks are getting together and meeting with each other. And I'm sure once you know, again, things get a little bit better, uh, folks are going to be able to um, congregate into our cultural centers and meet others, study, um, and you know do that challenging uh, of themselves to, you know, learn about other folks and other cultures and ethnicities and backgrounds um, as a whole. So we're hoping that this is a, a good stop for, for folks to come into just to, you know, check in to see how, how we are. Right. And then also just to add a little bit to that is that, you know, especially through our success coaching, um, that's mm -hmm. um, a development of a one-on-one -on -one relationship, you know, where we yeah. do one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching. So, like I said, we really try to really get to know our students, right? Um, know their interests and their passions and things of that nature so that we can be a great resource for them. Um, if they're interested in, in study abroad, okay, that's my job to really make sure that you have that connection. And we have liaisons all across campus as well, within um, financial aid office, dean of students. So, you know, it's our job to make sure that they're connect, well connected. Oh, that that all that helps a lot. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, I was wondering one other thing, and, and sort of in connection to that. Um, it, so, if a student sort of heard all that and they're like, "Yes, I want to be involved. Yes, I want to be a part of this. This seems exactly what I'm looking for." Um, what part of their process do you think they should start, um, sort of signing up or or getting involved? When do they have to start worrying about? I do want it, and I have to do this to get involved. Um, is it during orientation? Later on? What part of the process should they connect? Well, they can I mean, connect anytime. <laughs> yeah, def definitely. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it's you know, like they said, you know, it, it's great that you, you know, what is it? Um, better sooner than later. You know, um, so, but as Sierra mentioned, they can connect with us at any time. Definitely, um, you know, they can do it during orientation. Um, but even you know, we have students that. Just say, oh, I just found out about you guys. I wish I would have known <laughs> earlier, you know. Uh, or they may have heard it from a peer or anything like that. Students can connect with us at any stage of, of their college experience. Um, and they can visit us on our on our website, www.umass.edu backslash CMAS. Uh, we're located in Wilder 101 Wilder Hall, or they can give us a call, 413-545-2517. Um, they can also connect with their academic advisor and their academic advisor can also refer them to us as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
if they attend any of our events, they can connect with our student staff. They can also connect with us through that. So, um, or, you know, just attending different events. I know we, we have a lot of things on social media so they can reach out to us yeah. that way as well. You know, follow us. You know? <laughs> so yeah, th there's many ways that they can connect with us and, and you know, better sooner than later, but you know, um, at any time. Great. Uh, and, and so the last question that I have, and this is what I'm ending every video with, um, <laughs> is uh, kind of just any other recommendations or pieces of advice that you have for a new student, a transfer student, um, it doesn't have to be CMAS related. Um, oftentimes the things that we're, you know, the things I know about are transfer related. So totally understandable if, if that's the recommendation comes from CMAS specifically, but really anything that you'd have for a new transfer student coming in. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Sierra. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say like, keep yourself open-minded. Um, obviously you are incredibly resilient already for, you know, wanting to transfer and, you know, wanting to join in on the UMass Amherst family. Um, but, you know, join clubs and organizations that might not be within your norm or you think you might not have any talent in or anything. If you want to do ballroom dancing, go do ballroom dancing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> try out for those teams and everything like that. Um, go to events that seem interesting that you might not know much about. Um, I think that is probably the biggest advice. I know that's what helped me when I was a transfer student um, and was going to seek out those opportunities because that's where I got honestly the most value out of my college experience by doing that. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, um, college is what you make it, you know, so I encourage students to really make the most of their experience. Um, and as Sierra mentioned, just kind of get involved, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then secondly, you know, believe in yourself, right, because, you know, you're unique, unique, and you are in control of your future, you, you completely are in control of that. Um, and one other thing I always mention to our students that's so important, build relationships. Relationship mm -hmm. building is one of the most important things that you can do. You know, the more people that you meet um, who know your story, you know, so share your story, um, it's going to open up doors for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, as I mentioned before, you're not alone. CMAS is here to support you all the way because we care about you and your success. And uh, finally, welcome to the CMAS family. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I think, a wonderful way to end. But uh, I, I'm going to come in here and just say thank you both for, for, for joining me today again. Um, and we'll have a lot of those links and, and ways to contact CMAS in the description of uh, either the video or the podcast. Um, and yeah, thank you both for coming today. <laughs>